Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. It is time to do the very first round of the My Bad TBR game for 2023. So today we are going to be selecting my January TBR. <laughs> Before we get into recapping how I did in December and then jumping into January's gameplay, I did have one bit of housekeeping that I wanted to do. So if you've been watching my bookmas videos recently, you'll know that I posted a lot of videos about some challenges that I've set for myself, including authors and books that I definitely want to read and try in 2023. I actually have all of those in this little cup here. And in order to ensure that I meet these challenges, I'm going to be drawing a couple of the little slips of paper in here to see what I will be reading in January. Now, how many I decide to draw every single month is going to change just depending on what I already have on my TBR or things of that nature. But in general, I need to read around four of these authors or books in order to satisfy these challenges for the year. So we're going to see. The only real grace I'm giving myself with regard to what I draw from here is that I'm only allowed one chunky fantasy at a time. And that is because chunky fantasies are basically the only thing I try to read physically these days because I like to be able to annotate it and take my time and refer back to maps and historical context and things of that nature. And because of that, I typically read them very, very slowly. So I definitely do have a handful of chunky fantasies in here. So if I pull more than one at a time, I will allow myself to go ahead and put one of those back for the next time I draw. So for January, I'm only going to be drawing two from this. And that is because I have two already on my TBR for the month of January. And we'll get into that in a little bit. So for right now, I'm just going to draw two from this mug and we'll see what I'm reading. Oh, please be kind to me. <laughs> Okay, let's see what we're starting the year off with here. Okay, okay, let's see. Capturing the Devil by Carrie Maniscalco. Okay, so this is actually a selection that I'm both pleased and displeased by. This is a series that I've been reading slowly for the past several years. There's only four books in the series, but I basically pick them up when I pick them up. And this is the fourth and final book in that series. It's not a series that I've really loved or connected with or anything of that nature. For the most part, I do have a good time while I'm reading them, but it's nothing I'm ever drawn to read. And as time has passed since I read the last book, I haven't really been very interested in continuing. But because I only have one book left, I definitely want to go ahead and complete the series. And so that's why I put this on the list of 23 books I want to read in 2023, which is now actually beyond 23 books, if I'm honest with you. So selecting this for January means at the very least, even though I don't know whether I'm going to love it and I'm not necessarily in the mood to read it, at least selecting this for January means I'm going to be completing a series at the very beginning of 2023. Okay, let's do the next one. Let's see what we've got. Okay. Ooh, Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Okay, so I don't know terribly much about this story overall, but I do know that it is Lee Bardugo's first foray into adult content, and I do believe that it follows Yale and Secret Society, so it's got some dark academia vibes in here, but I also believe that it follows magic as well, so there's a little bit of the fantastical thrown in. And I have been wanting to try this for a while. I was a really big fan of Lee Bardugo's Six of Crows duology. I also liked the Grisha trilogy, and I wanna see what she could do with like an older age range. And the premise of this book sounded really interesting to me, this comes at a great time as well because I know that the sequel comes out in 2023. So if I really, really enjoy this, then I could probably move straight on into the sequel if I wanted to. So this one is a great one. All right, so now let me go ahead and quickly recap how I did in December. Very first book that I read in the month of December was Bountiful by Serena Bowen. This was number four in her True North series and this satisfied the TBR game prompt to continue a series. So I did complete and satisfy that prompt. Next, I read Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Casamano. This satisfied the prompt to read my most recent acquisition. So satisfied that one as well. Next, to satisfy the prompt of reading a book with red on the cover, I read Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey. To satisfy the prompt of reading a book that is on someone else's TBR, I read Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Absolutely loved that one. That was a great choice. I read Daisy Darker to satisfy the prompt of reading a book with a name, place, or number in the title. This one did not go so well. I gave this a 2.5 stars, but I at least completed the prompt. Kiss Her Once For Me by Alison Conkren satisfied the prompt of reading a book box selection. And then the final prompt I needed to satisfy was to read a mystery thriller and for that I read Before She Was Found by Heather Gutenkopf. So I actually completed all of the prompts for my December TBR game so there will be no punishments or anything rolling over into January so I'm quite pleased about that. That means we get to basically start with a blank slate for January. So with all that being said let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay. 
All right, everyone, it is time to play the very first round of the My Bad TBR game for the 2023 new year. This is the board exactly as we left it after the December round. You may notice that my draw deck is just a tad bit higher, and that's because I received a new deck of cards in the November unboxing of the Authentic Books box, and so I wanted to incorporate it here. Aside from that, there really is no other housekeeping. We're going to go ahead and jump right into the gameplay. I hope that the board is kind to me because with all of the challenges that I've set for myself in 2023, I cannot afford multiple punishments or multiple additional books. So let's go ahead and see how this goes, starting with draw number one. All right, we have a 10. Now let's see what color. All right, we will be moving blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten color. All right. So for my first draw, I drew a number 10 and blue, and that landed me on the prompt of color, which basically means I need to utilize a random color generator and whatever color I get, I have to select a book with that color on the cover. So I'm going to try to insert a clip here of me doing the random color generator and it's selected vermilion for me. And from what I understand, vermilion is kind of a red orange color. And so for that, I selected killers of a certain age by Deanna Rayborn. It actually has the perfect red orangey color here on the cover. I am super excited to go ahead and get into this. From what I understand, this follows a group of women. At the start of the story, they are probably in their late 50s or their 60s. And for the past 40 years, they have worked for the museum, which is an elite group of assassins. But now, you know, they're getting older, they're past their prime, nobody really appreciates their ways anymore. They're kind of seen as old school. And so now they're being forced to retire, I believe. I don't know if they're retiring voluntarily, but they are retiring. And in order to mark their retirement, they are being sent on this all expenses paid kind of cruise. However, once they are on this cruise, they find themselves targeted for death. And they kind of of realize that the only people that could have ordered a hit on them were basically their own people. So they're being targeted by the people that they once worked for. And now it becomes a fight for survival as they have to use the methods that they've relied on their whole lives during their jobs to go ahead and survive themselves. This just sounds absolutely fascinating. It sounds like it's going to be fun and fast paced, probably with a lot of humor thrown in. But I also get the sense that this is going to be serious in some capacity and possibly very thrilling and suspenseful. And I'm down for that. I really want to see what Deanna Rayborn does with the story. I've never actually read anything by Deanna. Anna Rayborn and just the premise of it intrigued me which is why I picked it up for book of the month so I'm very very excited to get to this one in January. All right draw number two. Okay we drew a three in red so if we move this guy three one two three that lands on summer vibes and then if we move this guy three that lands on highly anticipated. You know what since we are in winter I don't necessarily know if I want summer vibes so let's go ahead and do one two three highly anticipated. Next, I drew a number three in red and landed on the prompt to read a highly anticipated read. And I have just the selection. I'm going to be reading The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. So The Last Housewife is actually part of the 23 and 23 challenge that I'm setting for myself, which is one of the reasons why I didn't draw more prompts from that little jar because I already knew that I was going to be reading The Last Housewife in January. So technically, I will now be satisfying three of those challenge prompts. So I don't know a lot of the details about The Last Housewife. I don't really want to know. All I know is that it follows a a sex cult and I believe people who have escaped that cult or are currently in the cult I'm not entirely sure but I do know that there are a lot of trigger warnings it's supposed to be very dark very gruesome one of those books that you really have to be mentally prepared for going in and I am ready for it I am here for it my dark little soul just wants to eat this up I really loved in my dreams I hold a knife by Ashley Winstead it was probably one of the top tier dark academia books I've ever read and so I'm excited to see what she does in this one I will admit that I'm a little bit nervous because I did try her romantic comedy I got about 12% of the way in before realizing that it just wasn't for me. I didn't like some of the things that she was doing within the story. It's possible that Ashley Winstead is just not the romantic comedy writer for me, but maybe suspense thrillers is where I find my niche with her. So we're going to go ahead and give this a shot. I really hope that I love it as much as everybody else seems to because this book has been getting literally nothing but the highest of praise. So I'm a little bit nervous and cautious going in, but also very excited. All right, so I drew a two. Now this is one that I definitely have to draw again afterwards. However, a two means that I can move a prompt from start. And since I have several blues in start and nothing directly in front of their start space, I'm gonna go ahead and move this guy out here onto a free space, which means when I draw again, I'm not actually adding anything onto my TBR because that is a free space and I do not have to add a book if I do not want to. All right, next I drew a number two and blue. And because number two is one that allows me to get out of start, I moved one of my blue palms 
icons out of start onto the free space and I will not be selecting a book for that because I do not have to. However, I do have to draw again because I drew a number two. So now let's go ahead and draw again because I drew a two. Okay, so queen is a lovely draw because that means I get to move one of my guys directly into home base. Let's see which color is going. Blue again, blue is getting a lot of play this time. So I get to move one of my guys into home base. So I can either move this guy right here or I can move the guy that I just moved out onto start. And let's go ahead and just move him so we can clear the space directly in front of start. Next, I drew a queen and blue, and a queen actually is a reward and allows me to move one of my pawns directly into home base. I drew the color blue, and so I moved that guy that I recently got out of start, and I put him into home base, so he is safe for the remainder of the game. Nothing can touch him. All right, draw number five. Okay, we have another two, but this is another situation where I can move one of my guys out from start because I have one of each color in start and nothing blocking them. So this is probably another situation where I'm not going to have to add another one to my TBR, even though I do have to draw again. All right, I got green on that one. So we're just gonna move this little guy out and then we will now draw again. Next, I drew another two, this time green. And once again, I did have green in start. So I just decided to move one of my green pawns from start onto the free space. Again, no book will be selected. All right, y'all, we've got another queen. All right, so the board is being actually quite generous, but I still do need to add some books to my TBR. So first, let's go ahead and get another one of my guys into home base. All right, Mr. Yellow gets to move to home base. And since that will make my only live yellow pawn in home base, I get to move one of the yellows back onto the playing field. Oddly enough, the next draw was another queen. So we had two twos and two queens right in a row. For this queen, I was able to move one of my little yellow pawns into home base. And now he is safe for the rest of the game as well. Again, this one, no book is going to be chosen. All right, so if I've counted correctly, that is six of the now eight draws that I have to do. And I still only technically have two books from this TBR game on my TBR for the month of January. So let's see what else the board has in store for me. All right, so we got to move five and red. Let's go ahead and turn the board and see what we got. All right, so my two little active red pawns are still very close together. So we would have one, two, three, four, five book box or one, two, three, four, five mood read. And y'all know what I'm gonna choose. One, two, three, four, five. We are going to go with a mood read. For draw number seven, I drew a number five and red, and this landed me on the prompt to read a mood read. And I have not selected anything to satisfy this prompt, y'all. I'm going to have a legitimate mood read where maybe if I'm in between books and nothing is ready for me at the library or I'm not ready to jump into my next TBR read, I'm gonna go ahead and select a book that sounds the most interesting to me that I have current access to. So we are going to be actually mood reading at least one book in the month of January. All right, and the last draw for this round. All right, we got to move the blue pawn eight. Now eight is one where I do have the option to swap prompts, but it wouldn't be to a prompt of my choice. I would have to randomly draw the prompt that I switched to. So let's see what this blue pawn lands on. I only have one actively out on the playing field, so we'll see what he lands on and we'll see if I decide to swap or not. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Goodreads pick. So what that means is that I have to go to my Goodreads feed and the first time I see a book in my feed that I have on my want to read list, I have to go ahead and read that book. Okay, so I think I'm going to chance it and I think I'm going to go ahead and swap prompts. So I'm going to have to randomly select the prompt. And so I will go ahead and do that live on camera so we know what prompt I will be switching it to. So with that, that actually ends all of the draws for this round. Okay, and then the very final 
final draw was a number eight in blue. This landed me on the selection to read a Goodreads pick. However, drawing a number eight means I can either stick with the prompt that I land on or I can swap prompts. But the catch is that I don't get to choose the prompt that I switch to. I have to go ahead and randomly choose. And I have another mug full of those prompts. This is like one of my favorite mugs of all time. I got it in New Orleans a couple years ago and it recently broke and it killed me. But what we do with broken mugs in this house is we use it for projects like this. So I think I've gone ahead and decided that I want to switch prompts, but I didn't choose any book or anything for it yet because I haven't actually selected the prompt. So I'm going to go ahead and select it right here, right now in this video. And then I will pause to actually go select a book to satisfy the prompt. So let's see what we have. I hope it's kind to me. I hope I didn't make a really bad choice. Okay. Okay. Let's see what we got. <laughs> random color generator again. Okay. So I have to go ahead and do another random color generator selection and select a book based off of that. So hold on. Okay. So this time I got salmon pink. So let me see what I can find. All right. So it actually took me a really, really long time to find a book that I owned that had salmon pink on the cover because salmon pink is not a traditional pink. It's like an orangey pink. And so all of the books that I had with pink, it was like baby pink or bright fuchsia pink or something like that. It was obviously not salmon pink. However, I do think that I found something that can work. So I'm going to go with surviving Savannah by Patty Callahan. So as you can see here, right up here, there's like this orangey pink sunset going on. And I feel like that's a really great representation of the salmon color because it's not quite orange. It's not quite red. It's not quite pink. It's got a little bit of all of those colors mixed in. And so I'm going to go with this. Now, from what I understand, this is a historical fiction that follows a ship sinking in the South that was kind of deemed the Titanic of the South. And Titanic is definitely a buzzword for me. So it says, when Savannah history professor Everly Winthrop is asked to curate a museum collection focused on the newly discovered artifacts salvaged from the steamship Pulaski, known as the Titanic of the South, she's hesitant. Still healing from the death of her best friend, she's struggling to regain her sense of adventure and passion for life, but she can't resist the opportunity to try to solve some of the mysteries of the devastating night of the ship sinking in 1838. Everly's research leads her to the extraordinary stories of two aristocratic women from a family that boarded the Pulaski together, a known survivor, Augusta Longstreet, and her niece, Lily Forsyth, who was never found. So it sounds like there's like a mystery involved here that maybe our main character is going to help try to solve, and I'm here for it. I'm actually very, very excited to give this a shot. So we're going to go with this one. I do also have two other books that I will be reading in the month of January for my book club. I will be reading Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Seven. This will actually also satisfy some of those challenges that I'm setting for myself since I did want to read Gabrielle Seven in 2023. So that is four total that will satisfy those challenges that I've set for myself, which is perfect. From what I understand about Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow, this follows a friendship over 30 years, which sounds right at my alley. It sounds beautiful and character driven. I think it's going to be very poignant, probably heartbreaking at times. It reminds me a little bit of Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna, which is all about a friendship over many, many decades and the trials and tribulations that goes along with it. And so that's kind of what I'm expecting going in, but I could be completely wrong or completely off base, but I hear literally nothing but great things about this book. It's getting so much hype and it does sound like a book that is right at my alley. The other book club selection that was picked was The Woman in the Library by Sulari Gentile. Now, this is a book that I've seen floating around here and there, but I haven't really heard much about it. I don't really hear anybody talk about it, and it was never on my radar to pick up before now. It sounds interesting, but it doesn't have very high Goodreads ratings, so I'm a little bit cautious about it. It says, The ornate reading room at the Boston Public Library is quiet until the tranquility is shattered by a woman's terrified scream. Security guards take charge immediately, instructing everyone inside to stay put until the threat is identified and contained. While they wait for the all-clear, four strangers who'd happen to sit at the same table past the time when conversation and friendships are struck. Each has his or her own reasons for being in the reading room that morning. It just happens that one is a murderer. So that actually sounds like a really, really great premise. But like I said, I don't hear it talked about much and it doesn't have the best rating. So we're going to see what I think. So these are the books that I currently have on my TBR along with The Woman in the Library, Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow, The Last Housewife, and whatever book that I decide to mood read. So we are planning on starting 2023 off with a bang. I'm really hoping to love a lot of the books that I'm reading this year. Please let me know if you have read any of the books that are on my TBR and what you think. Please let me know if you think I should prioritize one or the other or if you think I'm going to love or hate any of these. And please let me know what read you are starting 2023 with. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because I would sure love to see you in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.